funny enough, uh, we started with a simple conversation. So imagine it's election day, 30, 40 million people showing up to vote. What our software does is allow them to register these people, check for duplicates, or if there are any signs of fraud. Can we have a loyalty program where an average person can earn points every time they shop for groceries and this currency effectively becomes a second source of wealth to pay for everything from your electricity bill to school fees and doctor's bills. Two of my cousin sisters suffer from breast cancer and uh, I ended up losing them. That's when I thought, you know, we need to do something with technology to build a new way of doing breast cancer screening. In my graduate school, I was one of two women in a class of 45. And it kind of got me thinking that this is not what it's supposed to be. We have uh, this patient called Maria. She's six years old and she was having these daily seizures. She lived in a remote area in Brazil where there is no specialist and no one in the city could help her. I'm a developer during the day, but then during the evening I wear my cape and I do Google stuff. One of the things that's most amazing is being on Google Cloud has enabled us to be online and available 100% of the time. With automated health checks, security checks, and logs monitoring, I use tools like Stackdriver to keep me on top of all of that. Google and the Android platform have become kind of a backbone of our entire product ecosystem where we could actually build this loyalty program powered by mobile phones. We use deep learning and the technology stack called TensorFlow to interpret thermography, which basically measures the temperature on the chest and then figures out if there is any abnormal tissue activity. And this can be five to eight years before a lump is formed or felt. We're actually helping people to get access to doctors that they couldn't have without this tech. For example, this case with Maria, with Google Cloud, we connect to the clinic device, measure Maria ring waves, sent to the best trial neurologist in the country, 3,000 kilometers away in Sao Paulo, and she found the cure for Maria. And this was awesome. I run the Google Developer Group Vancouver chapter. I see girls from high school, they actually show up at our meetups. They know nothing about the product. And after like one hour or two hours of time, they can build something from scratch. I'm one of the co-organizers of GDG Cloud London. We are the most active GDG Cloud community in the world. And I love how you can achieve all these dreams and passions and ideas you have using the Google Cloud platform. Whatever you, you do in life, try to solve a meaningful problem. More than ever, people are asking for purpose on the work that they do. You're not just building product, you're building product that can change people's lives. My hope is that we will excel in technology, women will get their seats at the table. I feel that Google just empowered me. From that moment, it's been love, just pure love. Innovators, please welcome Damien Caponi. Hi, everyone. Thanks. I love a round of applause in the morning. It always makes me feel good. It gets up with a little bit of energy. I've been talking to a few of you already outside. Looks like you're stoked. You're ready to be here. You submitted a ton of content for us. The first people in the room took the first chairs in the room. I told them it was the splash zone. They sat there anyway. My name is Damien Capone. I will be your MC for the next couple of days. We are stoked to have you here. Might use that word a couple times. I am from Southern California. I wanted to thank right off the bat all the people you see that are still standing, all the folks that are helping out with all the production here, everyone that's part of the program itself who is running all of these student innovators, all the folks that will be teaching you throughout the next couple of days. There is a ton of content and we hope that you are prepared to soak it all in. I wanted to start with a little bit of a story. And I might be dating myself here because I might also be twice as old as some of you, but that's okay. In the high school days, my high school days, and also in my college days, we would work on many a group project. Are you familiar with these, the group projects? Okay, immediate nodding, yes, Damien, we know what group projects are. In the group project, when we did it, it was very different in the collaborative realm than how you guys work on them now. We would have to have a leader of the project, 
We would meet in real life at the beginning. Uh, we would actually talk through what kind of an agenda we wanted, and then from there, we'd split it up into multiple pieces. So far, that sounds pretty regular. The difference is that the lead person would now send out uh, a Microsoft Doc. Maybe you've heard of these. Uh, we would each have to individually write parts of it. We'd have to email them back to one another. We had email. We weren't you know, savages at the time. We had email. And from there, somebody else, we'd have to put our trust into somebody else to combine everything together, print it out, or submit it through whatever portal was being submitted. And we would just leave it at that. There were problems always with formatting, issues with spacing, font choices, even the way, even the language that we used within a lot of these things was different because a lot of different people were writing it. Fast forward many years to now where we work on collaborative things all the time. I mean, the decks that you'll see behind us are in the moment, right? They're collaborative. They're things that we can do all together, all the time, being in different rooms, being in different places. And that's part of what we want to build with you guys as well, a collaborative community focused on cloud. And hopefully, we'll be able to achieve that within the next couple of days. I grew up in Southern California, as I mentioned. Tell you a little bit about myself here, uh, since you're going to be hearing a lot from me, and I don't want you to get too sick of me. Um, and from there, I went to Cornell for my undergrad. Shout out to the two people here that are from Cornell. Can I call you out? Where are you? Yeah, there's one. And the other one is over there in the corner. Perfect. All right. So my mom, my alma mater, they're doing something much more interesting than I am, though. I, I, I did industrial and labor relations, which is essentially a degree in how unions and management do not get along. A lot of negotiation and talking and figuring out people's problems. From there, I went to grad school at Pepperdine. I studied conflict and dispute resolution, which was a lot more of listening and talking. From there, I moved right into Google. I started off in our perks department, perks and benefits. Uh, if you're familiar with napping pods, that's one of my fun facts, is I did part of the deal to bring napping pods into Google's culture. So I've been at Google for about 11 years now. I have a lot of history, a lot of fun facts that we might get to throughout the day. I uh, started there. From there, I moved on to our global diversity and talent inclusion team. Many of you are in computer science, so you know this. But one of the things I worked on there was working specifically with our underrepresented groups within computer science, specifically women. So back 10 years ago, I was working on Grace Hopper. Has anyone attended the Grace Hopper conference? All right, good. We got some knowledge in the room for it. And we did all of our presence at Grace Hopper, where the biggest deal back then was hoping that we could get the entire Pittsburgh office to show up to the conference. Nowadays, it's 1,000 plus Googlers who are showing up. So an incredible difference and a huge commitment that we have as Google towards women in computer science. My work there transferred me into a staffing role focused, focused on computer scientists, trying to get more computer science kids into Google. Sorry, CS, but uh, I like the business kids more. So I switched over and started working with business students, um, to which my friends say, oh, Damien, you have the easiest job at Google. You have to convince people to work at Google. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can think about it like that in one way, but you also have to think so many people associate Google directly with technology that for folks that are studying sales, finance, HR, something that's legal related, something that's marketing, right? things that are not computer science, they forget that we are a possible employer for them. So what I do now is I work on our undergrad and MBA side, focused on training up hundreds of Googlers, sending them to college campuses nationwide, and hoping that they promote our brand, talk about Google, personify us as real human beings, and then find a lot of cool new people to come and work with us. I partner with some teams that you might be familiar with from your experience on campus. I partner with our university programs team on the tech side, as well as the university programs expansion team, as well working on tech-related students. So you should be seeing a lot of our folks on campus in one place or another promoting Google and uh, you know, seeing where we go from there. We have worked on so many collaborative things on my teams that Again, I use that because I want to make sure that we're working on things together. I want to know how many folks, real quick, have already made a friend. Yes. Is it just like by default because it was somebody that was in your room with you last night, and you're like, oh shoot, you know, like who's this people? Yeah, cool. Just checking in. So again, I welcome you. Excited to get you in here today with us. Start off with a little bit of Google history or Google culture, if you will. Who can tell me? What is Google's mission statement? First hand up. Yes, ma'am. 
to organize the world's information and, yeah, sir. Make it searchable, it's close, yeah. To what? Don't be evil, that's one of our mottos, yes. The mission statement is a lot longer than that. We'll go to, we got three people. Our mission statement is to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. So yeah, search was, you were getting there with a couple key words that we were looking for. We came up with this mission statement back when Google started. And it's been a mission statement that stayed with us ever since. It's something that's core to our business, it's core to our business needs, it's core to how we work on things. And when you look at it, you also think, well, that's pretty big. I'm not sure how that fits to an individual, right? Or, or how it associates to what you'll be doing when you're on campus. Thing is, it, def it, def it, def it, sorry, it doesn't associate immediately. It associates after you've spent some time working with us. So when I first started, I absolutely did not understand this. I didn't think that I was helping make the world's information accessible. But years later, I did start to see how my efforts with Google help us achieve this mission. So that's what we're looking for, is, is a way to tangentially align with it in one way, shape, or another. Over the next couple days, we do have a few goals for you. So it's not just sitting here, it's not just listening, it's not just having fun. It's a variety of things that we hope that we achieve through the way in which we've organized the days and through which the interactions that we have with you. Knowing the tools, understanding the tools, knowing the tech, understanding the tech. There's a lot going on here behind the scenes. Now, I watched a lot of your videos that you submitted early on. I read a lot of the what can I do with unlimited resources that you guys wrote uh, before you came to this. A lot of really humorous uh, and then also really solid events that you were talking about. And the range was incredible, talking about local issues, global issues, talking about social justice issues. A few of you focused on specifically on technology-related things. Others just talked about making all the lacrosse you could possibly make, right? There's just like one person that laughed at that because they know that I'm talking about them. Um, so there's, there's a lot of things that, that you guys were working on, but this is our goals for you, right? Making sure that you understand the tools you'll be working with getting deep dives in all of these from professionals in that area. So we have a ton of really good speakers for you. They'll be coming and educating you as much as possible on these tools. Knowing, making sure you know GCP and all of its functions. Also, making sure that you are confident around the technical parts of these tools. So it's not just knowing it, but it's also being comfortable from a tech standpoint so that you can then teach it to other people. Remember, this isn't just for you. Right? We're trying to scale your knowledge to the people around you. So when you go back on campus, you're able to work with them, and you're able to grow what you know and what they know and build some of these dream apps that you were thinking about. And the last bit here that I've talked about a few times now already is this element of community. Building community, not just with the person next to you, not just with the person in your hotel room, but the person who is part of your school with you, right? Like the Cornells, you guys aren't sitting next to each other. Probably should. Cool, I'll just keep calling out people I know. Um, but folks that are from the same school, sitting next to each other, getting to know each other, getting to know people in your region. So people in Southern California all know each other. People in you know, New York know each other. People in different states actually getting to know each other so you can build some of these community events. As we think about those, we want to make sure that you're doing events when you do them you know, regionally, if possible, making things bigger, figuring out how to scale something. And I think that we've selected the right people in order to do it, right? We've, we've certainly heard from, or we will hear, I guess, the type of people that we have here. I know you've all met each other, super creative folks, right? People that are engaged, people who know the technology, people who already are driven and curious as to what we're doing. So these are the folks that we have in the room folks that have this high energy that already came in and are excited to learn more. So we are pretty excited about all of that piece, right? We know that you want to be an expert in all of this space. So we're excited to have you. What were some of these? Oh, this was a good one. So the, if I had unlimited resources, I thought I'd call out the meta one in the room. Somebody said, if I had unlimited resources, I would hire a group of talented young individuals and ask them what they would do. <laughs> Wait a minute. So clever, clever, y'all. Um, that's what I'm saying. It's like, you know, again, thank you for submitting these videos, right? Taking the time to figure out what you might want to do 
within all of these things. Because we're young, or you're young, and I'm twice your age, uh, we like to get social on some of this. I don't know how many of you know this hashtag already, but the hashtag GCP Innovators is one that we want you all using. Uh, if I saw some of the photo booth pictures that were already down, so I think that's pretty exciting that you're already taking advantage of that and making sure that you're able to use those and posting all the things on the Snappygram. So making sure that you've got things on whatever social medias you choose. Is that not what it's called? OK, I thought I was close. Um, making sure that you're posting things on the relevant areas and making sure that you're able to you know, step up and, and show the rest of your student population what you are up to over the course of this week. Let's see, we also have the rest of the demo space. I know there's a lot going on out there. So might be able to check that out whenever you have breaks and whenever you have sort of that extra time. I'll try to keep us on time as much as possible, so either from the back or you know, from the secret side places, but making sure that we are able to learn as much as possible in the time allotted to what we have. And with that in mind, I wanted to finish off with a few key reminders for you. So these reminders are, one, you're an adult, use the bathroom if you need to. You don't have to wait for a break if you need to. Uh, the agendas should all be within your packets, right? You have that. Um, you should be able to keep that and, and be able to learn from it. Making sure that you are learning. Take the notes as you need to take the notes. Enjoy. Ask the questions when eligible. Pull those of us that are working here aside. Ask us questions during breaks. Get to know the Googlers. Get to know the people from the different, uh, the different demos that are being shown. Get to know the Vaco folks a little bit better so that you're able to come back to campus knowing everything that you need to know. And lastly, but surely, is again this element of community and collaboration and making sure that you have those under your control, making sure that you're able to grow within our program. So with that, I want to get into the stuff that we're already doing. Uh, I wanted to bring out Aaron and Cindy, who you already know from Baker. You should have had a lot of communications with them already. They should not be strangers to you. Um, and they will be instrumental in your learning plan. So being able to tell you all about what's happening within the program, building the program with you, they should be your first line of defense for all questions that you have. And uh, they're going to kick off the rest of this day, this morning, with some program, uh, some program beginnings, right? Some, some information for you and, uh, and what you'll need to know. All right, so let's bring them out, uh, Aaron and Sydney. Sydney, sorry. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> Look good. I really like that picture of me. Wait, wait, wait. Thanks. Uh, so I'm Aaron. I think at this point I've met everyone um, when we did a check-in. Thank you for bearing with us on that. I really appreciate everybody being here. I think we have 194 out of 200 people here. So in the uh, missing people are for good reasons. A broken ankle. I'm going to take that as a pass. So um, for you guys, it's been a whirlwind hiring 200 people. We had over 2,000 applications. We conducted 247 interviews, just me and Cindy. So I really appreciated getting to learn, you get, learn about you guys, some of your, your learnings in regards to what you know about GCP, what you want to learn about GCP, and what you want to learn about yourself as we go through this program. So uh, let's take a look at what we're up to, Cindy. You're on top of this. You need to introduce yourself. I'm sorry. I know. It's OK. Um, so you guys already know me as well. Cindy, I met pretty much all of you guys at registration as well. So like Aaron said, it was nice getting to know all of you yesterday. It was nice speaking to you all during interviews. And I really look forward to working with you going forward. Um, it was up there on the slide, but I've already let a lot of you know as well. But um, I'm going to be working with everyone that's not in the Eastern Standard Time time zone. So yay. Um, so what are we going to be doing and talking about today? We're going to talk a little bit about the Student Innovator Program in general, and you guys have heard a lot about it already. We're going to talk more about our expectations and targets for the year, and I know you're all really curious about that kind of stuff. We're going to talk about the 2018 timeline and what you can expect from this upcoming school year and the program. We're also going to talk about campus strategy, and that's something that we're going to be working on throughout the entire school year as well, but this is really where we're kicking that off for the year, and then we're going to end with having a couple of alumni talk and tell you about their experience. And I know you guys are all curious to speak to previous SIs and know how they approach the program. So yeah. Move down over here. 
Is it just a nervous habit that everyone grabs their computers? <laughs> Did you go first for your phone? And then you realize, you know what, I'll take the bigger object this time. <laughs> so uh, you guys can't live without it. I've seen it. We asked you to bring it. Please use your notes. Uh, try that handwritten thing. Back in the day, we wrote our notes. Um, it's a little bit more quiet than what you guys may do in class. Um, but what is a student innovator? Well, we've got 194 examples. Each one of you is different in your own way. Each of you brings a certain level of education, like I was saying about GCP. And what I really enjoy about this program is there are students from big universities, from small schools, from all female schools. I, I am surprised by the diversity of what we enjoyed in applications, what we saw in interviews. And I'm so excited you guys are here because we're going to learn how to be advocates for GCP. We asked you specifically in the interview what level of knowledge you have about GCP. Who feels like they're in the top 10% of education about GCP that they can go out in the field right now? Hands? Excellent. Who thinks they're in the 50 percentile? You guys are going to be helping the rest of us, right? I, I believe there's so much to learn about GCP. You guys were very honest about you, what, what you believe students on your campus can use GCP for and how we need to teach you for that. And I'm going to show you how we're going to build your strategy. And you're going to have an individual opportunity to build how you want to be an advocate, how you want to educate, and then last, what I just asked you, product training. That's what we're going to do this week. You know what? It's going to feel like a week at this point. It's only two days. But I tell you what, I already feel like I've gone through a Monday and a Wednesday. I'm really excited about our Friday, which will be tomorrow evening. <laughs> <laughs> OK, the description. How much do I need to tell you? You're already here. So we're going to be working as a team. Now, we've got fancy little words here. A higher education program working with we don't need to read it because we're all going to be doing it. You all interviewed, and you're all exceptional students. So here we go, learning professional skills, one of my favorite parts. Um, we're going to be showing you how to present in a group. We're going to be talking about how to pull together a deck so that you can show people in a very direct manner how to use GCP so you don't find yourself wandering on a stage with a clicker and not knowing what you want to talk about. So I just went through a lot of this slide. I've been doing this for a while. I accidentally always go to my next slide because I'm too prepared. Who in this room wants to have that problem? Never heard. Oh, so you guys are going to make A's in your class. I don't know what everyone else is doing with their hands down. Um, OK, so here we go. Tools, skills, public speaking. Who wants to learn the public speaking part one? I find that really interesting. I find that's going to be a really great opportunity. To be a good public speaker, you need to have the background knowledge of what you're going to be speaking about. So these three bullet points are going to build to the point where you are an advocate, you are an example, and you're a personification of what is GCP. Now, Cindy <laughs> is going to tell you where we are. All right, so we mentioned this to a lot of people during the interview. We've talked to you about it. But the GCP Student Innovator Program is spanning across 100 different campuses across the US. Um, this means we have a huge network of students with diverse backgrounds and experiences so, so they can advocate for GCP on campus and take innovative, creative approaches. You all have different backgrounds. You have different levels of experience with this. You're all different majors. You know, There's a lot of overlap, but a lot of you are in totally different concentrations, different approaches to technology. That's what makes the program great. And that's what's going to make you all great student innovators. Um, so yeah. You've met everybody. I think I heard before when he was talking that a lot of people aren't even necessarily sitting next to the people they're going to be going to the same school with. So it's great. Take this opportunity when you're here with all of your other student innovators to network, meet people, you know, make friends, uh, learn from each other. And you guys can definitely use each other throughout you know, the course of the program to find different approaches and what's working for people you know, on the East Coast, what's working for people on the West Coast, what's working for people in the middle. Um, so that's what's great about the program. And I know you're all curious as well about our org chart and how is this all structured. So we do want to do, um, some of you have seen them walking around. We want to just give a quick shout out to our Google stakeholders. They manage the program on the Google side for us. And that is Michael, Haley, and Tara. And then you've met both me and Aaron. And a lot of you met Jason for the time that he was there yesterday. And you will see him walking around today as well. But he is our VACO operations manager. So he's going to be working very closely with us as well. We're going to go into more detail about this structure at a later time, too. So you guys will have plenty of opportunity to learn that. 
And next, let's talk a little bit about what kind of tools you're going to be using at the basic level. What's going to help you function from day to day as an innovator with the program? So we're going to be utilizing the Google Classroom. This is where you guys are going to be able to find the hub for all of your assignments, resources, training materials, things that you need to access any given day. That's going to be stored in the Google Classroom. Um, we're also going to be using the G Plus Student Innovator Community. That's an opportunity for you guys to chat, discuss, ask questions, reach out to people as well. And of course, you know, we're all at Google, so let's make sure we're using the G Suite for everything else that we're doing. If we're going to be putting together a slide deck, a document, sharing communication, it all needs to be happening on G Suite. Sound good? <laughs> Great. Um, and expectations and targets. So you guys are seeing a lot of numbers up there. I'm going to quickly run through them. And these are things you're going to learn about more throughout the summit, but also throughout the school year. So these are your expectations and targets for the entire program, your entire school year, OK? That's 1,500 individuals that you've reached via networking. Those should be people that know your name, know what you're doing on campus, know that you're a representative for the GCP product. 500 students at your campuses interested in learning more about the GCP product. These are people that are following up with you. These are people that are coming to your events. These are people that do want to learn more and utilize the resources that you have available to you to learn more about GCP. Eight to 10 high impact events. So we're going to talk a little bit more about what high impact is versus what low impact is for these events. So high impact events, um, Aaron is going to chat a little bit more about them. But just for a brief idea, that could be a workshop that you host. That could be a hackathon. That could be a large type of event that involves a little bit more planning, a little bit more coordinating on your part. We're also going to have 10 to 20 low impact events throughout the course of the school year. Now, Again, Aaron will talk about low impact, but that is minor events. That could be having coffee with people, hosting office hours, meeting up after class with a small number of people just to talk a little bit more about something they could be utilizing for an upcoming project or something that you're doing in a class. We also are looking at three stories about GCP and its influence on your campus. So this is something you want to keep in mind as the program is progressing. Stories are things where you saw that GCP had an impact on other students, interesting ways you saw it being used, interesting ways that you were able to approach it. Those are things you want to keep an eye out for, and we are going to talk more about it later. Um, and this one's really interesting and fun. One to two collaborative projects. So we do want you to reach out to that other SI at your campus. We do want you to work with them to host an event, to work together and build that teamwork. But this could also be working with people regionally. You might want to work with a sister campus to you. You might want to work with someone to plan something, you know, an inter-college kind of activity. That's absolutely welcome. And we encourage all of you guys to reach out to each other and utilize that student network. Now we're going to go over timeline. We're going to work with your school year. So you're going to see up here that we are onboarding right now. So you guys are here with us. July, we did the hiring. August, we're now doing the training. Now what happens when school starts? Beginning September 1, you guys are going to be on the clock. So we're going to have fun building our campus strategy. We're going to have fun building and diving into maybe one of your first large events. And then we're going to go into a couple of those small events that maybe you're currently comfortable doing. Throughout that first semester, you're going to build that skill set so we can move into the second semester and do some projects that are going to help you as a student and as a learner. So we've got the numbers that we just talked about, Cindy talked about, for semester one. And then we're going to do another version, semester two. The benefit being semester one, you kind of get your feet wet. And then we're going to move into an I want to see and Cindy wants to see that we've done a good enough job training you all that you're going to run into events that are going to stretch beyond maybe what your personal comfort level is. So let's have a little bit of fun with maybe the lighter stuff, learning, and then the higher level stuff where you're pushing. We're going to, I'm going to work with your school year, I promise. I know we asked a couple of questions um, in interviews. Are you available all, all of the school year? Some of you were so sweet to say, well, I'm going home for Christmas break totally allowed to go <laughs> home for Christmas break. You're not going to hear from me. I'm not going to, OK, maybe a couple times I'll email you. But uh, no, you're off the clock when you're out uh, from campus. So when you leave campus because you're on a break, we're not going to be doing any work. However, within each of these months, we're going to be looking for that 20 hours of work that we discussed in your interviews. So I don't know if anybody's doing the paycheck math, but you've got, <laughs> what is this for? You guys. 80 hours in the front and 80 hours in the back. 
So, and then we got a couple in May and June. Um, one of the, actually, no, let me move over to, no, now I've got it. One of the returning GCP, can someone raise their hand and tell me what their most favorite, like, high impact event that they did last year? There were several large ones. Yes. Can you stand? What was that? So it was the NCAA event last year. What's awesome about it is we helped provide you with the assets you needed to host it. Now, I don't know. You may not have felt comfortable doing that until we provided you with the things you needed and you dove right into what would be a high impact event. So building something that didn't previously exist, making it all your own, and providing what is the advocacy and the personification of GCP that we talked about. Now, the low impact events are the ones you don't, have to, you don't have to go hard on these. These are the ones I want you to settle into, make it personal, talk one-on-one -on -one if that's what makes you most comfortable. Maybe you do office hours. Maybe you do a brown bag lunch. Now, brown bag lunch, some of you have asked. That's simply saying, hey, can we all get together? Can you bring food? We're going to sit at this table. There's six of us. And I want to tell you about GCP. I want to talk about how we can be more collaborative because, hey, man, I don't think we did that last project as well as we could. Why don't we do a little bit more collaboration using GCP and the entire G Suite education platform? I'm excited. I'm excited because all of this hard work should make all of your classwork a little bit more simple. Well, comfortable. It's not going to be simple. You guys have some hard <laughs> stuff. I get to hear about it. I really like it. You have a lot more uh, technical stuff than I ever did in college. Mine was a business degree. This is practically one of my assignments. Um, so we need you to do those 750 personal introductions in semester one. Cindy mentioned the 1,500 over the course of the school year. And then 500, the way I like to think about the contact addresses, 250 per semester. All that is saying is that I did a really good job hanging out with my friends and some new people, and they want to learn more about GCP. So you should be tantalizing them enough that they want to come in and say, yeah, go ahead and reach out. What you got? It's not hard, it's also not easy, and it's gonna be that personal skill set that allows you to jump out in front of people, introduce yourself, introduce yourself to uh, people to the product. I think it's really fun. I think everyone should have like one thing, one personal thing that people don't expect from you that you can talk about. So it's pretty cool. Even to the point you can share it with family members and they can give you that look of, I have no idea what they're saying. They go to school for this. I'm so excited they're talking about things I don't know because they're going to teach the next generation. Campus strategy. Let's start from the top, work our way from the bottom. So campus strategy, bird's eye view of what we're going to be working on. So we're going to build from our objectives. This is what I want to accomplish. It's your campus strategy. My objectives are x, y, and z. You can write them down now, but we're definitely going to be talking about them through the rest of the week. Go ahead and write down if you have it off the top of your head. Oh, campus strategy objectives. What are those? What do I want to learn? What do I want to show? Who do I want to talk to? We're going to talk through that. You're going to work that out, and you're going to do all of this with pre-planning. We're going to try not to do it on the fly. So we're going to take this time before school starts. Actually, September 1, we're going to work on this. September 1, we're going to take this time for you to look and say to yourself, this is what I want to get done. This is what I want to do. I want to do a big event, a couple small events, and I want to meet this number of people. Sound good? What does that look like? Well, we need to look into the, what is the institutional map of my university. Who's who? Where is that? Where am I going? How can I build it? Um, one of the most important things that will help you through the entire project is to understand who you need to know to complete your objectives. Who is responsible for this room I want to do an event in? Who is the president of the student government so I can make an easy reach out to them? You're going to think through it before school starts so that the moment you get into class, you can make this very easy for yourself with your pre-planning. So we're going to drill down, bird's eye view. I'm going to stand up here. I'm going to stand in my map. And I'm going to say, hey, this building, that person, that organization, I need this information. I'm going to write it down now. Aaron's going to help me. Cindy's going to help me. You got to love G Suite, the commenting feature. 
I don't even have to jump on video that often. I want to see you all. There's a lot of you. <laughs> Personal development. This is very important to Google. It's very important to me and Cindy that you all gain some, some training in what is the personal level of this product. I want you to work on event planning, public speaking, product knowledge. I want you to dive into things that you may not be comfortable with now, but I love to say you should get paid to learn. It's the inverse of what you're doing right now. You're paying someone to teach you. I want to pay you to learn something. So we're going to take some time doing that. We're going to get ourselves excited, and then we're going to share what we learned with others. I think this entire project is simple. If you're excited about it, you want to learn more about GCP, all of this entire project is being cool with other people, sharing who you are, learning more about them, and saying, hey, can I share some more GCP with you? I totally want to RSVP for an event, and I need you there. Thanks. <laughs> now, I want to introduce two of our previous GCP students. They had outstanding projects. They're going to talk about two different types of projects that they did. And I, Blake and Katie are my go-to when I have questions. So I'm really excited to give them this opportunity to talk to you all so that you can also have their cell phone number and bug them with random questions. So uh, let's start with Blake. Blake, what's up? How are you? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, my name is Blake Hallison. I'm a student and innovator. And I'm here to talk to you guys a bit about humanizing GCP. So what is the cloud? It's a lot of things. Is it this area that you send data up to? Sometimes you get it back. Sometimes you may not. I think a great place to start is with the Google Cloud Platform. There's this misunderstanding that we're simply sales, we're PR, we're marketing. And that's not the case. We're partners. We grow and we build communities as they do. And we're able to do this because the Google Cloud Platform is a customizable solution. What works for one innovator, what works for you, or maybe you, is not what works for the next. It's unique, it's different, and it's what you make it. So why does GCP matter? It's a product not for coders, not just for techies. It's a product for the people. It has inherent value, and it has a purpose, and it just has to be realized. And that's where you guys come in. Speaking from my own experiences, this past year, we had an event called the Advanced Bracketology 2018. Aaron spoke a little bit about it. At my school, we had 300 students show up for three plus hours during their exam week to sit, to speak with Googlers, and to join this active conversation, this dialogue that we were having in our local community. It was an awesome event. Outside of our local area, we joined an event called Perkins Hack. Perkins Hack is where differently abled individuals go and coders try and figure out, as well as tackle, their real world issues in a span of 48 hours, which is crazy if you think about it. Everything nowadays is becoming tech savvy. Your oven, your stove, it loses its knobs, it loses its buttons, and that's hard, because if you can't see the knobs and the buttons, how are you supposed to use it? We looked at those challenges and we tried to solve it within that period of time, using Google Cloud Platform as one of the platforms as we move forward. It's awesome when you think about how many people are out there who are interested in not only speaking to you guys, but learning about the platform itself. Last year, I developed an Excel sheet of 75 contacts. They were active. They were interested in having a follow-up conversation, as well as working and partnering with us and doing what we do. And that's crazy to think that there are that many people out there. And it's more about you making sure that you just say hi. You say hello. So what works? What works for me might not work for you. It depends on your situation. It depends who you are. It depends what you're dealing with. I can only really tell you what worked for me. From my own experiences, it always made sense to have a lot of projects going at once. Never to kind of stand still and say, this is the one thing I'm working on. Always make sure you're creative and innovative. If something doesn't work, that's OK. Learn from your mistakes and move forward. Lastly, and I think this is the biggest point I have for you guys, is always make sure that you're in the right place and make it the right time. This program is awesome because it's only limited by your imagination. And with that being said, imagine what's next and go build it. Thank you.
Um, how are you guys doing? Good? You sound really sleepy. Let's get louder. How are you guys? OK, that's a little bit better. So my name is Katie Lee. I am a student at UC Berkeley. I studied business administration. And last year, I was actually a student innovator for G Suite, um, which is something that I'm really interested in. And after Blake talked a bit, a bit more about you know, different ways that you can reach out on your campus, I want to give you guys more examples on the stuff that I actually did last year. So I did some um, high impact events last year. And then one of my favorite is the G Suite Times Google Home Mini case competition. So how many of you have used Google Home Mini or heard about it before? Raise your hand. So that's almost everyone in the room. And it's like a trend on the UC Berkeley campus as well, is that um, you know, things like Google Home Mini and AI and case competitions are really big trends. And I thought about, hmm, how can I integrate something that everyone is so interested in and then make it into events on campus? So the first thing I thought about is to integrate G Suite and Google Home and make it into a case competition. So the topic was, if you can think about integrations between Google Home Mini and G Suite, what kind of use cases can you think about on college campuses and benefit college students? So that was a really fun event. About 300 people participated. And then in the end, we gave out free Google Home Minis as prizes for the event. So that's one example. But what I also want to tell you guys is that you can integrate um, this position as an SI with your own positions or with events on your college campus. So at UC Berkeley, I am a president of my consulting club called Diversitech. And then what we do is that we do consulting projects for tech companies in the Bay Area. And in the, in the very beginning of our semester, we have a training like this where I stand in front of my members and then teach them how to make slide decks. So in G Suite, you know, Google Slide is a huge product. So I use Google Slide and Drive and Google Form to teach people how to make a consulting deck, teaching them how to use um, Form to track data, how to pull surveys, and how to use Google Slide to make slide decks into really pretty formats, into very visually appealing ways to attract people. So those are really great, great ways to engage with people on your campus. And the very last thing that I did um, is actually the first event that I did, but it's kind of not related to G Suite. It's actually related to Google Cloud Platform. And it's a hackathon at the UC Berkeley campus called CalHacks. And CalHacks is one of the biggest, if not the biggest event that we have on campus every year. And then last year, they invited me to speak at the event as a business major because I don't come from a technical background, and it's really interesting to be involved with something that's really technical. So at the event, I talked to different people um, at CalHacks and told them about my experience of working as an SI for something that's very technical but for non-technical purposes or majors, and to encourage people to also do the same thing at school. So this year, it will be really interesting because um, GCP is a relatively more technical product than G Suite is, and I'll still be continuing as an SI. And just from speaking to the really wonderful people here yesterday, a lot of people that I met are um, computer science or computer engineering or MIS majors. So my goal for this year is to think about really how to humanize GCP and how to bring this product on campus as a non-technical major to more to everyone on campus, regardless of what they study. So yeah, I'm really excited for this year. I know everyone who just spoke are really excited as well. And this is the wrap of our presentation. Thank you so much for listening for this entire hour and excited for the rest of the conference. Thank you so much. I love those two. They are so impressive. I, speaking with them, they did projects that previously they wouldn't have felt as comfortable. But you can tell from those are two rock stars. We have interviewed at least 200 rock stars. Now we interviewed 247 or so rock stars. Unfortunately, or complimentary, they're not here. So uh, congratulations on that one. But what we want to do, you are here. And we know you have questions, so we'd like to ask you, what are your questions? Have you stand up, say it loudly, and then we're going to do our best to provide an answer. So if you have a question that you think your peers also would like to be answered, let us know. Cindy's and, uh, running with that. Yeah, and we're also going to bring uh, Blake and Katie back out yeah. here. So you're welcome to ask them any questions that you might have about what they talked about or what was going on and what they did last year as well. So. 
Yeah, let's knock out those questions that everybody's like, you know what, I, I needed to know the same thing. So uh, <laughs> yes, Green Mike. Hey, how's it going? Um, so I'm a returning innovator from last year as well, and one of the biggest issues we had was uh, doing everything within the 20 hours a month. So if you wanted to plan a big event or maybe like a hackathon, that could be an all-day event which would take up half your you know, allotted time for the entire month. So how are we planning on doing all of these requirements within the allotted 20 hours a month? Last year, we were fluid. We tried to be more fluid with our hours. So yes, it's 20 hours a month. Um, what strategy-wise, you try to saddle the two months. You can knock out 20 and 20, the end of October, the beginning of November. So we help you balance how you're working with your time. It's 20 hours a month. It can be five the first week, 10 the second, then I have exams, and then I've got five in the last week. So yes, I, last year I saw a lot of these challenges. We worked around the clock as best we could, and obviously uh, we helped um, people when they went over with hours, because everyone should be paid for their hard work. So uh, no, we're looking forward to it. it. It is a difficult challenge, and that's what we're here for, because it's not an easy answer, as I just rambled. Yeah, and absolutely, you know, every situation is gonna be slightly different as well, which is why we encourage you to always reach out to your program managers to ask more specific questions and say, I've got something going on. Is there something that we can work on? Is there a way for us to work around this? What other resources can be provided to maybe cut down on my planning time? Those sorts of things. Awesome, thank you. Thank you. Oh, oh. We were gonna oh, use the green mic again. <laughs> green mic. Hello, as another returning SI, I know uh, last year there was a lot of credit redemptions and stuff like that, and I was wondering if those codes would be returning to provide students with a way to be, be able to interact with the cloud platform. Mm -hmm. We're working on it. So last year was a lot of learnings. This year we're still developing. Best part, we're listening to you guys to see what's mo what is most effective. So just like you guys building a strategy, I don't have an answer yet but I'm gonna find that answer for you. All right, so one of the problems, well, I'm a returning SI, my name is Viri, by the way, I'm at San Jose State, and one of the problems I faced, la encountered last year, were, was um, getting in touch with professors, like getting them to um, basically incorporate the platform into their curriculum. How did you guys do that? Um, I think a great way to start is with the classes that you're taking. And I think for me, it was, um, I was wondering which uh, program were you in last year? Is it G Suite, GCP, or Daydream? GCP, okay. So it's kind of different for me because I was in G Suite, and G Suite is something that everyone on my campus uses already. So like for professors, it's a bit easier for me to talk to them and like tell them about our products and how you can integrate them. So I think for GCP, a great way for you to start is by reaching out to maybe CS professors, especially the introduction level professors, because a lot of people take those classes, especially in public schools. That was one of uh, our most common questions um, and, uh, and challenges. And you have to build from the bottom up a lot of times. So you start with your TAs, you start with the students that you know the professor already has a relationship with, and you move up the ladder. I will say, Katie, we had a great time last year with G Suite. I feel like it was, um, it was a little more, the crowd was more receptive. I think with GCP, it is a challenge, but it's a great chance to learn. And I, we are, we're gonna have to start bottom up a lot of times. Because they don't, they don't incorporate GCP. I think some of the biggest pushback was like, hey, GCP's new to my, uh, GCP I'm not using in class right now. Can we just work on that next semester? or we're using AWS and it's not in my curriculum and I don't wanna go change it because I just built it in July and here we roll into the semester. So I like it, I like hard stuff and I think we're gonna be able to pull this off because you feel good when you fix the hard stuff. Otherwise you just go to bed and you're like, I guess I got it done. But I think Blake had an answer too. Yeah, to quickly add to that point, it's hard because a lot of professors will say to you like, I don't want my classroom used for sales or I don't want it just to be PR because my students are here to learn. And that's great because that's where we come in we're on the back end, for instance, with the CS suggestion, they're already using platforms that are similar, but they're not as good as GCP, or there's an add-on that works with our platform that doesn't work with others. So it's understanding what they want to get out of it as the professor in terms of the value for their students, and then how can you fit yourself within that dialogue. 
Uh, hello, I'm Rena, and I'm also a returning SI. I just had a question about collaborations. So since many of us go to schools that are close to each other, uh, would you guys have any advice when it comes to like having events together or like any restrictions that you would like might hold upon us? Restrictions. Hmm. Good question. I know restrictions. restrictions. Hmm. We don't have restrictions <laughs> yet. Not yet. So we're gonna. You guys are free for all right now. Um, no <laughs> restrictions yet. Uh, Rain is a returning daydream. I love that the returning SIs. It's kind of a mix sometimes of G Suite daydream and GCP because the skills that you need aren't always like this deep, intense technical. It's learning what people need, want to know, and then creating the energy that they want to dive in deeper. So I'm so excited that Rain is back uh, from the daydream crew. Um, yes, you actually have a great opportunity because there's several universities surrounding where you are. So is it San Jose State? Is it? Yeah, so several um, universities around your area. Uh, we do, we connect. I think you guys, a lot of you sign the privacy kind of thing like, hey, you can share my personal information with others. Uh, that's one of our biggest challenges is making sure people are comfortable with introductions. And then I think last year, because we had some great experiences with G Suite, we plugged a couple of universities together. They, they were too far apart but then they started to learn to better use Hangouts, and they could integrate that into their project planning. I like the efficiencies of it, because you can both accomplish a project um, with your collaboration instead of carrying the entire load on your shoulders. I don't believe we did a good enough job with that last year, and I'd like to do a better job, so I would like you to push us and make sure, like, hey, I, I want to do this. I don't have enough support. Can you please introduce me to X, Y, Z? I know, I didn't do, I didn't do a well enough job last year. Um, and I, I want you guys to stay on me so I improve. Uh, so I'm a new SI, and uh, one of the things I've noticed is so we all have, we, there's two representatives from each school, and each school has, is of different size. And like I'm coming from a school who, that is relatively small compared to some of these schools that have like maybe even 60 to 80,000 students. Like I have about 8,000 students. Um, and I don't even know if there's 750 CS students at our school. So could you guys lend advice on how to mm -hmm. like, I guess to reach out to other areas that um, so we can meet these, can these requirements uh, easily because it's I came from a school I came from Virginia Tech um, uh, I transferred and like that school the intro classes had like 400 500 people in them so you could easily reach out to tons of CS students whereas here some of the intro classes are uh, maybe like 80 uh, at, at max so. Yeah. Mm, that's a really good question, and I know that it definitely is a challenge because every university is totally different, and that's where the campus strategy really comes into huge play because depending on what your school's needs are, the approach is going to change, right? Everyone, just like you're saying, sometimes the classes are smaller, sometimes um, you know you have a little bit more people kind of swarming around you that you can kind of pull from for that. But I also think that's where some of the collaboration is really key as well. So in a school where you might not have as many students, you may want to reach out to somebody who's at a school that is larger, that's close enough that you guys can collaborate on a much larger event and a much larger scale that can attract students from multiple schools to come in to that one event. So I know that um, when I spoke to some of you guys during the interviews, a lot of you mentioned already working collaboratively with other students at other schools to run hackathons, to run workshops, to do these things. Um, many of the um, clubs and activities that you guys are involved in, a lot of them have relationships with other campuses, clubs at those campuses. Those are kinds of people that you can work with too and reach out to. So that would be um, my suggestion there, but I definitely understand the challenge. And I do think each school is going to have a different approach. And what's going to work for one school won't always work for another. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a really good point. So that is why we're here too, to help you guys and support you and provide you with that kind of information as well. I think, Katie, did you work with a couple other schools last year? No, I can't remember. You didn't do collaborative projects? Yeah. I worked um, with a couple. You did? Yeah. So you, you built your little, your opportunity, your, your leads, your yes. opportunities across other universities. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. So your challenge that you're saying in terms of having a smaller school, just for background, I go to Boston University. It's larger, but it's not the largest. And I really think what was limiting to me is, like, obviously, they want us to kind of keep around 20 hours. But it, again, the program scales as you do. And I think what you can do then is you pull in other student innovators. So you figure out who's locally within this community and kind of access them as touch points and figure out what works for them or can you collaborate on something. But in terms of having a smaller number size, what's great about that is I was limited a little bit because I didn't have so much time to get to know everyone, to have all these one-on-one -on -one conversations that I want. And really with the Google Cloud Platform, it's great because it's not quantity, it's quality. It's, it does a lot of things, it does. 
but at the same time, it's also how much does it do and what is the value that it provides them. So when you have a smaller group or you have kind of one-on-one -on -one sessions, you can really sit down and figure out what works for this individual, how can I improve their life, and then at the same time, what should I kind of give back or figure out for the program internally? Nailed it. <laughs> Okay, real quick, adding on to his, um, you guys talked about collaborating both locally and remotely with other student innovators, but as far as I can tell, like my college, um, I'm the only one from my college here, so I'm not sure if there's another student innovator at my college, which would make me the only one, which might make this a little bit more challenging in terms of trying to organize things locally and trying to reach out because I only have so many contacts myself, whereas if you had two people, you could combine contacts and collaborate and put things together. Okay. So I was going to ask how that might work out. Yeah, so um, that's actually a really great question. Each university will or campus will still have two SIs. So not everyone is here in attendance. So most of you are here, but not everyone. But each school does have two SIs. So before the program actually kicks off and you're going to work, we will do an introduction and make sure that you know who your fellow SI is um, so you can work with them. So there will still be two, even though you might not have met your co, you know, co-SI for your university or school, they are going to be there. <laughs> Which school is it so I can get on top of it today? Johns Hopkins. Oh, Johns Hopkins, yep. I'll get, <laughs> I have some homework. I'll get you a friend. <laughs> we have a question way back here. Hi, so um, I'm a new SI, and I was wondering about like program budgets. Because for example, mm -hmm. in my school, like you have to pay to reserve a room to like host an event. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you think that rolls over? Um, so, okay, so um, as far as the budget goes, I think this is maybe on one of the FAQs, but it's mm -hmm. kind of a reminder anyways, but you are allotted a $50 a month budget for room reservations and stuff like that. But if it is something, um, I believe, I can get clarity on it, but I believe a lot of that will roll over as well if you're trying to plan a much larger event and you don't want to use that budget for like the earlier part of the year and you want to push it over to the end, that is something that you can do as well. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Katie is master at budgets. <laughs> How did you work it last year? Because I know you had a little bit of a pricey side. one. Towards oh, the end. yeah. So you really got to be smart about how you spend your money, okay? This is like my word of advice. So <laughs> last year, I was thinking to do a Google case comp in, I think, first semester. But then it didn't roll out until over. second semester. Yeah, yeah, so it rolled out in spring semester because we have a semester D system. And then, um, as I mentioned earlier, we gave out Google Home Minis as prizes, and then I actually purchased them with my budget. So I contacted Aaron when like Google Home Minis were on sale in November-ish, and then I was like, Aaron, I want those. <laughs> um, so we had. So let's see, your budget gets rolled over. I didn't use any of my budget in first semester, so I had about two hundred dollars going mm -hmm. into the second semester, and then we purchased five Google Home Minis as prizes. So they do accrue over it, and then you have to be smart about what you want to buy and when you buy them, because it makes a huge difference. And I think it's the same thing with room rents as well. Like when you have that, like knowing how much that costs, how much money can you have left to buy other stuff. And I would definitely recommend too, just from my own experience at my university when I would host events and workshops and stuff, um, if you can work through a club that's already registered with your university, that helps tremendously because they don't usually charge you. Um, you know, stuff like that. So I would definitely use that. If you're not already going through an org that's registered, try to, because you get it for free. <laughs> to quickly add on to that point, I'm sorry. If you, so when you look at your fellow kind of student innovator, they're great because they're another contact, they're another lead for figuring out, okay, who to collaborate with and who are these separate groups. But going off of kind of what's been said, if you work within the clubs, we were trying to book a room that was around $20,000. And that was way out of my budget. But at the same time, <laughs> if we partnered with four or five clubs and really made it a school event, the price became zero. Because what they recognized was that it was a student-run event. It wasn't Google. It wasn't GCP per se. But on the back end, we were really the organization that was pushing and driving kind of where are we headed, what is the conversation. So it's not sometimes always we need to only speak about what we're doing. But at the same time, it's about joining this collective dialogue. These two are outstanding. I tell you, I <laughs> learn something from them every week, and I'm so intimidated. But thank you, guys. Please be my friend. That's unexpected. Yeah. We're like, I thought we were, he's going to say, oh, I'm so happy. He's like, I'm so intimidated by you guys. <laughs> Makes you work harder. <laughs> hey, so I'm Nasir. I'm one of the new student innovators as well. And like, I feel like I'm not alone in the feeling that like, kind of confused on like the applications of like what we have to do. 
and like specifically you because you did GCP. Could you like elaborate more in depth about your event and like how you specifically took GCP and then like connected the two things and like made the event a reality? That's true. Oh, so I think a great example is honestly Perkins Hack. And why I keep going back to it was it was really an event for me that changed how I viewed not only the program, but what was my purpose within it. Prior to it, I understood kind of the value of GCP for me. But kind of when you look outside of your local community, tackling these real life problems within this greater community, it's something that's rewarding beyond just being in the program. And I think that's where the purpose becomes. When you look at, for instance, like how do you implement or how do you join this conversation, it depends. And I know that's maybe not the best answer, but for instance, with this one case, what we did is we, a lot of the coders were using kind of a drive or a backup. And they also wanted to plug in separate APIs that communicated effectively to each other because they were trying to do vision or they were trying to do hearing and map all these separate systems. So they needed something, a place to put them collectively. And that's where we came in. We said, look, we have this great program. Why don't you guys check it out? We ran a little bit of a seminar where we kind of played around with some of the tools introduced because it isn't a program that people don't like at all. They love it. As soon as they understand it, they're like, this is the only thing I'm using. It's much more about starting the conversation and encouraging them just to click on the link. As a lot of people, per se, like, there were a bunch of new tools recently added. It was almost rebranded in a way. And as soon as they go on the website, they're like, this is amazing. Like, I didn't know this was out there. So it's much more about encouraging people to take the action and understanding when in this almost dialogue and the conversation to end and say, OK, now you take the reins and you kind of progress this forward. It looks like we have time for one more question. Right. And I'm hoping that you two will be available during the break to answer some additional questions. Yes. Good. We have a lot of great <laughs> questions in the room. One more here. <laughs> OK, that was kind of a challenging situation. I hope my question <laughs> applies to everyone. Um, hi, I'm a returning GCPSI, and I had a question. Last year, we uh, were tasked with the challenge to try to integrate GCP into our classrooms and work with professors on using the GCP. Um, I face a challenge, our school faces a challenge, that we are partnered with AWS. So a lot of uh, professors and a lot of students <laughs> are like thinking, how do we use AWS? How do we use GCP? And a lot of times, people ask me, what is the difference? Why should we use GCP instead? Because GCP, obviously, we got to hand out those credits, so a lot of students were interested. <laughs> so when you're asked the question, why choose GCP over AWS, how do we tell students, how do we share that with students, apart from workshops and apart from that, how do we just directly one line, here you go, GCP is better because... I, th I actually honestly think the best approach for that, I mean, it all has to come from your opinion. Obviously, that's, this is not the official word of Google, and we don't want to trash talk AWS or anything like that, you know? <laughs> um, but I think your answer should always come from your own personal experience. I mean, that is what appeals. Mm -hmm. That's why we selected you. We feel like all of you are interesting, personable people, people that other people want to talk to yeah. and have combos with, and they trust you, and they're going to trust your opinion. And one of the interview questions that we asked, and I'm pretty sure everyone got asked it, was, um, have you ever had to sell anything to anyone? Yeah. Or what was the last thing you bought because a friend asked you or told you about it? And part of what we're kind of getting at and, and asking you guys and, and letting you understand is that people trust the opinion of somebody that they trust because they feel like they're an expert. Yeah. So if someone's asking you, why do you think I should use uh, this over something else, give them your honest answer. And not just because I have free credits and I want you to do it, um, but, but more like, I personally think it's better because of this. I've been able to use it because I needed to do this project and it helped me get there. Um, using it allowed me to ace this one thing I was assigned to do, and I really think it would be helpful to you. So I think if you want that one sentence answer, it has to be what your real opinion is about the product. Yeah. Just be genuine. <laughs> Is that well, that's it? It. Thank you All guys right. so Thanks, much. Thanks, guys. Thank we'll be available for, at the break. <laughs> thank you for your energy. Sweet. <laughs> thank you, Katie. Thank you, Blade. <laughs> cool. Hey, everyone, just great that they finished that up. I, I, you already knew what was happening. Time for a break, but I get to let you know that you're going on a break. That's one of the benefits of my job. Well, two things I wanted to mention. The first was the demo space. Again, make sure that you utilize it, take all the pictures, use all the hashy tags. Uh, the other thing, I was alerted that upstairs, those Polaroid cameras, don't take the cameras. 
leave the cameras on the tables and then fill them with film and then take the pictures. And then you can take the pictures. Two things of taking pictures. But leave the cameras. And uh, I know there's more film coming if we already ran out of all of said film. So we'll see you back here, 11 o'clock, butts in seats, when we will start with some GCP training. Thanks, all.